document banning the use of perfidious and odious toxic devices. Unfortunately, mankind did not heed this call, and World War I saw the most effective and disturbing uses of chemical warfare ever used in the world to that point. First, the French launched tear gas at German forces. The Germans sent shells containing xylyl bromide into Russian lines. Then Germany attacked French, Canadian and Algerian forces with chlorine gas at the Battle of Ypres, followed by phosgene and mustard gas at various times. The Allies responded with their own chemical attacks. Although the number of fatalities due to chemical weapons was relatively low compared with other methods of attack, the chemical exposure caused millions of men lifelong suffering. Between the wars, chemical weapons were used against the people of Mesopotamia by the British and by the Bolsheviks against the White Russians. Fascist Italy dropped mustard bombs on Ethiopia during the Second Italo-Abyssinian War, killing and injuring an estimated 150,000 people. The Japanese army used mustard gas against the Chinese and carried out many experiments. The Germans also fast-tracked their chemical research, producing the nerve agents Tabun and Sarin in the late 1930s. We have a, a, what we call a time and combustion fuse and a gunpowder charge that is here. And this is an internal piston. Um, and as the fuse burns, uh, it will set off this gunpowder charge. Uh, it will shear the piston here, forcing that down the interior, which then shears the, the lightly threaded base plate, throws the base plate out and disseminates the chemical out the rear. The Allies also stockpiled chemical weapons ingredients and carried out their own research. But apart from Japan, none of the combatants used the weapons. from planes either as a spray or in gas bombs. But should enemy raiders use gas against your community, there is no reason for fear or panic. Because if you know what to do, you can protect yourself and safeguard your family against the menace of gas from the air. The ideal protection for civilians is an airtight gas shelter ventilated by a system which removes gas vapors from the incoming air. Such a shelter can be designed to provide some protection also against the effects of high explosive bombs. Some war gases can be seen by the eye, others are invisible. But it is important to know that most of them are heavier than air and that they settle down and are most concentrated close to the ground. Hence, if no gas shelter is immediately available, go indoors and go upstairs. The gas at that higher level will probably be less concentrated than down near the ground. Some war gases are spread as liquid, which slowly evaporate, giving off invisible but poisonous vapor. This type of gas remains for a long time, and hence is called persistent. Certain chemicals neutralize this liquid gas and trained decontamination teams of the United States Citizens Defense Corps, which is the civilian protection force of your community, are equipped to neutralize the liquid gas so that people may go outside without danger of exposure to the liquid or its poisonous fumes. But these workers must wear special gas-proof clothing and masks for protection. The completeness of their protective clothing emphasizes the fact that without such special protection, you must stay indoors until notified that the liquid gas has been neutralized and that the air is free of harmful gas fumes. Liquid gas may also be washed away by a heavy rain or by a stream of water from a fire hose. Out in the fields where liquid gas has been dropped, dry chemicals that neutralize the liquid gas are mixed with the earth. This scene should remind us to stay off the grass after a gas attack. Resistant liquid gas and the fumes that it gives off may be lurking unseen and covered by grass or shrubbery for days or even weeks after it has dropped there. 
Another type of war gas is dropped as a vapor. This cloud gradually thins out and disappears in a few minutes. When it has cleared from the neighborhood, it is no longer a menace. Because this type of gas disperses quickly, it is called non-persistent. Why does the enemy use gas against civilians? Well, gas bombs dropped by the enemy do not destroy our homes and factories as do high explosive bombs. War gas does not start the devastating fires that are the great menace of incendiary bombs. War gas does not shatter arms and legs as bullets and bomb fragments do. The real purpose of the enemy in using war gas is to spread fear and panic, to destroy our morale, and to cripple our war production. The enemy hopes that we will become scared and panicked, that the weapons our soldiers are waiting for will fail to arrive when crucial battles demand them. But you can thwart the enemy by not giving way to fear and panic because you know what to do if gas comes. Remember, close all openings which might permit gas-laden air to enter the building. Use blankets to cover windows shattered by high explosive bombs. Go up above the first floor. Don't go down into the basement unless you have a gas-proof shelter there. Stay indoors until your air warden tells you it's safe to leave. If you come in contact with gas outdoors, leave outer clothing outside the building. Time is your ally if you use it. So apply first aid as quickly as possible. Quickly remove any liquid gas by blotting. Be careful not to spread the liquid gas. Then gently and thoroughly bathe the affected skin area with the bleaching solution. Wash each eye out for two minutes with a 2% baking soda solution. Soap and wash next. Use lots of soap, do a thorough job. Use either a shower or pour buckets of water over you in a bathtub. Irrigate your nose. And gargle your throat with a baking soda solution after bathing. Don't waste time looking for first aid material. If you haven't provided them in advance, soap and shower immediately after removing your clothing. Wash your eyes out with plain water. If your lungs are affected, lie down to rest while waiting for the doctor to arrive. Or if blisters form, summon medical aid. 